Fala pessoal, hoje eu estou bem animado porque eu estou com o CEO aqui do projeto OVR, David Coutini. A gente vai falar aqui sobre metaverso porque está aqui tendo uma explosão no mercado cripto sobre esse assunto aqui também e sobre o futuro do projeto OVR. Então você não pode perder essa entrevista. Okay, guys, I'm here with David Coutini, the CEO of OVR. Welcome, David, and thank you so much for taking your time to join me today. Nice to meet you, André. It's a pleasure. Okay, today I'd like to talk about the OVR project, but also the metaverse and NFT space. I think a lot of people are interested in this now, but they have no idea what is this all about, okay? so um, But before we do all that, could you please tell me more about yourself and how did you get involved in the, with the OVR project? Yeah, thank you for the question, André. So, uh, OVR is born around three years ago. My background comes from the IT space. I'm a founder of different IT companies. I did some exit in the past on these activities regarding uh, web development, uh, deep learning, uh, quality assurance uh, services, uh, and uh, different kind of trending uh, businesses uh, that uh, in me from my career that uh, was beginning uh, at the, the first years of the 2000. And uh, basically OVR uh, is my big project because uh, for the first time in my life, uh, we are talking about a B2C platform. So it's a platform that is born to scale up uh, with the uh, community. And, uh, and we, the idea is to give the opportunity to the world uh, uh, community to create content and upload content on it. Yeah, cool. So yeah, maybe you can talk more about uh, also the, the uh, very simple introduction about the OVR because most people don't know the project. Uh, so what's the project all about? Is um, people can actually have experience of augmented reality, also virtual reality with their phones, right? Yeah, the, our platform is mobile first. Uh, the idea is to create a different kind of layers, uh, and it's why we're using also the blockchain technology. So we divided the world in hexagons of 300 square meters that are non-fungible tokens, uh, and the ownership uh, of this uh, of this uh, lens uh, is managed by the Ethereum blockchain. Then we are going to talk also the problem about the scalability and what we are doing to solve the gas fee problem and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But basically, the most important Important part is that, is that first of all we have a, a ownership layer. So basically, uh, the owner of this uh, digital space that is uh, anchored to the reality. So if you buy a specific place in Brazil or in Rome, you are the owner, and only the owner can decide uh, which is the content that is uh, browsable on that land. We are mobile first. So after this uh, digital layer and the SDK where uh, you, Andrea, can decide to create uh, a content, 3D content on it. Uh, the user, when uh, decide to browse uh, your content, uh, has to use only a smartphone. And uh, mm -hmm. is able, through this uh, profile, his avatar, to interact uh, with your 3D experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, our, uh, our platform is uh, hardware agnostic. So the idea is that right now, the, the mobile phone is something that everybody has in his pockets. Uh, but in the next future, uh, our platform is, will be the infrastructure for the glasses that will appear on the market in the next mm -hmm. year, we hope. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, this is something uh, actually people get a bit confused. Maybe we can give us like a, a very simple explanation. Of what is the, um, because people are talking about the, the metaverse now, NFTs, AR, VR. Can you give us like a, a bit, a, like an overview of what is this all about, this space? Of like course, uh, right now, you know, the metaverse uh, will be a new buzzword, no? a new trend like the artificial intelligence, or like uh, the blockchain. So everybody will talk about metaverse, even if they are not uh, in the metaverse space. No? So uh, everybody is trying also to give a, a definition of what is the metaverse. No, so we can also uh, go in, uh, from papers of the last uh, 20 or 30 years uh, to, to read uh, what is the definition of that. Uh, I like uh, to explain which is our vision, what is our vision on the metaverse space. So the metaverse uh, in, uh, in our vision is a merging or of a physical and uh, virtual stuff uh, in an economical system. So the idea is to merge, uh, in our case, because we, have, we are an augmented reality metaverse, is to merge uh, the, physical, the physical world you normally live in your life 
uh, with the virtual uh, reality contents on it. And uh, to define a metaverse, you also define the fact you have an identity on this kind of space. So it's not enough to say, okay, I'm in NFT, I'm the metaverse because uh, this NFT has some uh, capabilities or some uh, features. Uh, in the definition of metaverse, uh, okay, we can talk about this merging on the fact that you have a digital life, Andre, in a specific uh, game or uh, in, uh, in a specific platform that could do different things. So right now, the gaming platform, right, I don't know, uh, Roblox, for example, that is not in the, in, the, in the blockchain space that is generating huge amount of profits uh, is a metaverse because uh, there is a coexistence of users inside, there is a, a content creation by the community, and there is also the economical aspects because you can also earn, uh, buy, and uh, so you can manage also value inside. It's why in OVR we have also a utility token that is a borderless way to manage the exchange of value between the users. And then we have also, the, also this ownership, ownership layer that is managed by an NFT that manages the fact that the ownership of the specific virtual land that is anchored on the physical world is managed by yourself. It's not needed or centralized you know, um, infrastructure. Talking about the metaverse and the definition of, of uh, Facebook is about that and the fact they changed the name of the company, Meta, okay, is exactly our vision. The difference uh, between uh, the Meta and uh, the OVR platform is that the fact that uh, Meta, first of all, is a, um, cent a centralized uh, uh, infrastructure. And so, so if we imagine your new digital life inside this uh, fusion, the augmented the virtual world, uh, uh, I think that uh, the people uh, would like to understand better how we manage that kind of life. I don't know if you, Andre, you will love not to be managed by your life uh, by a centralized entity, a big, a big corporate. We know that the big corporates will become the new states. No, we know that. But um, talking about the metaverse, I think that we appear on the market something that we hope we are will be uh, the first one in the market where we see the raise of the open metaverses where the people can exchange value to a utility token. There is the ownership layer. There is the opportunity to upload contents uh, through an uh, IPFS system and stuff like that. So Metaverse uh, probably means that uh, is the way of your new digital life. And in our case, we have an augmented reality Metaverse. So we are a unique in the Metaverse space. Yeah, for me, it's funny also because I see um, Facebook talking about uh, NFT. We're going to talk about uh, Facebook in a moment, but uh, it's interesting, like merge metaverse NFTs, and uh, it will be a very interesting market in, um, in the, the, the near future, in my opinion. And uh, we also see that a lot, a lot of uh, blockchain uh, projects out there, and like many metaverse projects such as uh, the Central Land and Sandbox. Can you tell us more about the difference? What is the difference between yeah. OVR and these other projects? Yeah, it's very interesting because it's a, it's a question that uh, a lot of people have to ask now because uh, the main difference uh, is the fact that we are uh, an augmented reality platform. So in augmented reality, you merge, uh, you mix uh, what are virtual contents on the real world. So through the camera of your phone or through your glasses in the next future, you continue to have a normal life and you see an augmented uh, life uh, through 3D contents. Imagine to wake up in the morning, you go in, uh, you, you, in, in your bathroom, you begin uh, your, your day, you will see appear uh, 3D contents around you. Can you be your uh, uh, personal assistant that is uh, an avatar? You can see your calendar appear on your left. You can see, I don't know if you, if you like it, also some animals that run inside uh, your dinner room because you like it. You can see your garden and fountain, the Trevi fountain from Rome, because uh, you decided that is your life is augmented in this way. And this is uh, the real world merged with the virtual contents. I, I think that uh, it is also the, the, the most powerful thing we appear on the market because we're talking about the virtual reality and we cover also that kind of aspects. Uh, the virtual reality is uh, a complete occluded world. So you can generate uh, a virtual world, like I mentioned uh, Roblox before, that is centralized, but of course also sandbox uh, and uh, also uh, the central land when they created a virtual world with virtual lands uh, and you are uh, create an occluded world it could be gamified cartooned but uh, of course it's nothing uh, is nothing near the reality 
is something that, uh, but I, I, I think that uh, we coexist more metaverses you now in the, in, the, in, the, in the industry. So the virtual reality metaverse, if you think about Second Life, uh, we met the founder of Second Life in San Francisco two years ago, it was an amazing, amazing, an amazing experience. He invented the Second Life uh, near uh, 15 years ago, 13 years ago. So we are talking about uh, virtual worlds that now, thanks to the blockchain, we see a new life because uh, they are going to enter the NFT business uh, and the utility talk and stuff like that. But uh, the virtual reality worlds is something that already exists uh, since a lot of years. Talking about the augmented reality, we have to cover an aspect. So right now we have a mobile phone that is very powerful to stream uh, real, the real world to the camera and uh, add on uh, some uh, 3D content. But uh, when you see the, the raising of the glasses, uh, the, the wearables for this kind uh, of uh, metaverse, uh, it will be amazing. Because uh, uh, during uh, your day, you will live uh, inside this uh, merged world. Talking about virtual reality, if you have a headset, for example, an Oculus Quest 2, mm-hmm. stuff like that, it's not so comfortable to be there. Because if you try to use that for 10 minutes, for maximum 15 minutes, you are... Uh, a little sick about that, a uh, little bored. Uh, so it's not a so comfortable experience because it's not your real way to live your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, and, uh, I know because I actually this weekend I even play, I was playing some VR game and after like uh, 30 minutes, so get, get a really like, you know, my head yeah. was, <laughs> it's not com- comfortable. Yeah, so um, something I'd like to talk about also because we see that for a project, for a blockchain project we, to get to be successful, uh, in my opinion, we need users and people using the, the platform or the protocol. Um, how can you see for OVR, how can you see actually people, how many people are building or buying lands? Can we have like um, measure these things with OVR? Yeah, we know, because we are working in the blockchain space, the transparency is very important. Uh, we uh, pl- published a page that is linked by the uh, marketplace page. Uh, this is a stats.ovr.ai where uh, we can see a lot of metrics about the number of the lands uh, and uh, the countries where the the, um, the lands uh, and also the trending of our users if you can try those stats.ovr.ai mm-hmm. you can see that so talking about some metrics we are uh, over 350,000 of uh, auction closed and uh, I'm talking about the virtual lens. So the OVR virtual lens uh, where the people can uh, upload their content. Talking about the experiences that the people is creating, thanks to the web builder, we are uh, uh, talking about thousands of experiences they are beginning to upload on that. So we can see the growing of the number of the lens. So uh, the secondary marketplace is very important because we introduced the fact that uh, you can uh, also resell your land to other users so we can cover of course speculation aspects because right now people is reselling it with for a lot of vr tokens uh, their lands but we are talking on the fact that you are free to exchange you now this the this um, this land then we have this use case this is the treasure hunt the treasure hunt uh, is a demonstration that uh, the people is very engaged to go around the world to do things, to do games, to do activities. And after that, we are going to to talk about something that uh, I think that would be amazing for VR. That is the map to earn activity. Now, you know, right now there is a big trend that is called uh, uh, play to, to play to earn. Axie mm-hmm. Infinity teach to the world that uh, the opportunity to work inside a game. Work inside the metaverse will be the future you know, because uh, micro jobs inside these digital environments uh, will be something amazing because we'll able a lot of people to earn money. Uh, talk about, for example, the social impact that uh, this kind of thing can have uh, will be amazing. Uh, consider that Infinity got a, a big, a huge success in the Philippines. In the Philippines, uh, millions of people began to earn money and uh, to raise their wealth in this way. So, uh, talking about the user, the number of users of VR, we have uh, 200,000 users right now. We are growing very fast. We want to reach 1 million users now in the, in the next month, thanks to the marketing activity we are doing. And uh, the users are split uh, between the app users that use their avatar, can, can socialize, interact with the avatar, can uh, uh, attend uh, some uh, live events, stuff like that. and. Uh, the marketplace user. So we have two targets. The, 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 the mobile users uh, uh, probably doesn't matter 
uh, what is the blockchain and what is the technology under the hood. It's okay, you no, know, because you have to have a great experience uh, with the mobile app. Uh, you have to have this kind of a, a new browsing of the content uh, thanks to the app. On the other hand, we have the blockchain and also no blockchain users that want to invest, want to create content and want to understand how to be part of this metaverse. Mm -hmm. Interesting. No, sounds uh, very exciting. Actually, I even have some questions here also from uh, from the community because I asked people there like how, what what questions they have for for uh, the OVR. And one of the questions I had here, which is uh, interesting, um, the person here ma mentioned like when we get Unity support, which I don't know, I'm not technical. So, <laughs> uh, can we make experiences that communicate our, with our third party servers so we can build our own multiplayer AR games within your lens? Yeah, it's a very interesting question about the SDK. The SDK right now is beta. Part of the community is uh, trying it, is uh, giving us some feedbacks on that, so it's uh, quite ready to publish it. Uh, the difference between the web builder we, we, we published and the SDK is that the web builder basically is for a no-coder developer. So it's a, an editor. You can go to through the builder.ovr.ai and uh, you can uh, drag and drop uh, models. You, you create it. You can browse also uh, the web uh, to, to search for, uh, for them, for example, using Sketchfab, that is a very famous platform. You can also import your NFTs. It's, uh, it's cool because you can create virtual galleries. We have also some important artists in our platform that expose and sell the, their NFTs. And, uh, and so we bridge the NFT uh, to the wallet of the user to, to, to upload uh, this, this content. And uh, the SDK, on the other hand, uh, permits the coders to create more complex experiences because uh, through the scripts uh, over uh, the Unity engine, they can create interaction, they can create logics uh, and uh, more uh, complex uh, uh, activities. And also, uh, to answer the question, they can integrate third-party services to create an unknown interaction with uh, an, uh, an e-commerce uh, checkout uh, technology to to create uh, a flow in the e-commerce e activity. Games, but uh, talking about games, uh, we have to com to be focused on the fact that OVR is managed by an ownership layer on the blockchain. So only if you own the la the, the lands or you rent lands, so you take for rent some lands, or you ask the permission of the owner, you can spread your game over this digital layer. It's not possible to create a, a game. It is, uh, Andrea, something uh, like uh, happens in the web, no? In the web, you have a web domain, you are the owner of that web domain, you can decide which is the content. I'm the 30 part, I can ask Andrea, uh, can I upload my content on your website? You can say yes or no. In the same way, our web domain is the land. So all all the stuff, all the activities you can do on the web, you can do also in this uh, metaverse. And so answering the question, I can create a game. Yes, you can create it, the text to the SDK, but you have to be the owner or you have to have the permission to upload that game of different lands. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think, yeah, this is, uh, I see people are very interested in building games uh, with the OVR. Yeah. Uh, I think this is one of the applications um, people are uh, very excited about. And also another question, I think you talked about this in the beginning of the, um, the interview, uh, is OVR, this is also from the community, by the way, uh, is OVR planning to provide some user identification system that will be really good for a gaming customizable experience for returning users, for example, like if they go back to the game, yeah? Is something yeah. Yeah, talking about the, the digital identity is a big topic also in the, in the blockchain space, and don't, not only. Actually, what we are doing is uh, uh, works like that. You can, uh, of course, create uh, your, uh, uh, your user through your wallet. Uh, you can add uh, personal uh, uh, data on uh, connected to the wallet. Through the app, you can connect and create uh, your uh, identity through the social connection with uh, Google, Facebook, uh, WeChat. Uh, so we are trying also to uh, remove friction, no? to permit the user to go quickly no? inside the platform. Talking about, about the verification, uh, because uh, we manage also a token, uh, when you manage a token uh, inside our marketplace, so you buy to our system uh, the tokens, uh, we have also a KYC system uh, for the ML compliance. No? So we have a regular license to emit the token uh, and uh, we have to respect the rules for that. But uh, 
Talking about the KYC, uh, we can also introduce this kind of activity to identify the user inside the metaverse because one uh, big problem is to understand if uh, I'm talking with Andre inside this metaverse. Through the avatars inside uh, the OVR, you can chat, uh, you can have both a vocal chat and also through the avatars and also a, a text chat. And uh, but uh, how can I understand that uh, Andre is in front of me speaking with me? Uh, we can use the same technology we use uh, to validate uh, the crypto uh, buyers uh, through our uh, metaverse uh, uh, identification system. And uh, so if you decide to complete your identification, like also in TikTok happens, not the way they verify not through the documents and stuff like that, we can put a star, a green star of your name. So I can't understand that the photorealistic representation of Andre inside the metaverse is really under okay. and uh, it, i think that uh, it will be something really powerful because if you play in the central land uh, for example you can change uh, your uh, your body your aspect your face uh, as many many ways you want no because you can continue not to change uh, and uh, the, the 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 identity you have in this kind of metaverse is cool if you are talking about uh, a game platform, a cartoon platform, but it's not so cool if you're talking about a metaverse where we want to photorealistic uh, representate your identity and the stuff around you. So digital identity is a big stuff. We have a, a vision on that uh, for the mental reality platform where we, we, are, we are doing it. And uh, probably the digital verification is uh, some of uh, the, is uh, one of the, uh, the important aspects of that. Yeah, I see. Um, yeah, gaming and identity is very is very important. Um, but people are talking about game, but what kind of applications? What kind of applications we can also build with our OVR? I think it would be nice to to give us an overview um, of different applications, maybe. Yeah, well, um, the parallel with the web uh, I introduced uh, before uh, is uh, the right parallel to understand that, like, like in the web, you can do different kind of activities and contents and uh, experiences. Also, in OVR, so in augmented uh, reality metaverse, you can do a lot of stuff uh, concerning the e-commerce activities, uh, tourism experiences, gaming experiences, uh, entertainment, uh, all the stuff. So the imagination is the limit on that. Uh, also talking about the web uh, at the end of uh, the 90, um, we see that uh, at the beginning there were very simple pages with some uh, horrible styles. Uh, and at that moment there was all the, also only the HTML with the first version of the CSS that permits also to stylize the, the the, um, the sentences, but basically uh, the, the community, the users of the web, uh, day by day began to create more and more complex kind of experiences talking about the social network, the search engine, gaming activity, commerce activity. The same thing will happen also in this kind of metaverse. At the beginning, you will see that uh, you can already check uh, to our app uh, are uh, simple experiences. There are some uh, environments uh, with uh, some uh, uh, art galleries, uh, uh, we begin to see uh, some uh, little games uh, and stuff like that. But uh, it's not a limit by the, the platform. Of course, the SDK will help to create uh, more complex and complex uh, uh, activities on that. Uh, is a limit on the fact that we have to create a, a community that grows inside this kind of metaverse. So answering the question, uh, the categories of uh, the, the experiences you can do are the same on the web. So gaming, e-commerce, uh, tourism, entertainment, and uh, all the stuff we want to do in 3D and not you know, in, in, in 2D screen, you can do that. So there are no limits. And probably we will see experiences we today we not imagine will be appear. So new kind of businesses, uh, I was mentioning about the play to earn and the map to earn we are talking. We're going to talk about uh, so new jobs. Uh, the fact you can Andre work as an avatar, like a personal assistant for specific customers. Uh, you can see uh, that uh, all the stuff you can do in the real life uh, can have a, a virtual representation in our world. 
very interesting. That's why I'm so excited about the, the metaverse and uh, all this stuff. And uh, talk about that. We talk about Facebook in the beginning, also the interview. But um, we saw Facebook coming with this um, uh, announcement in the end of October, saying that they're changing the company name to Meta, and um, and this was uh, people got so excited about the metaverse. Um, and can you tell us more about uh, what do you think about the centralized Facebook metaverse versus OVR? Just uh, make just. Just tell us what you think about the centralization, because I think for me, in my opinion, it's a bit dangerous, you know, <laughs> Facebook having control of the metaverse. But anyway, I would like to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. This is the point, no? the, the centralization. Of course, uh, uh, Meta has thousands and thousands of engineers uh, and uh, uh, the videos, the teasers they publish on YouTube are amazing. Are exactly what we are doing on the fact that the avatar can interact in, uh, virtually from remote, can play, on each other uh, can uh, do uh, attend some live uh, events uh, and stuff like that so the vision is the same i'm very happy on that because after uh, that announcement uh, we receive a lot of request investment our token uh, <laughs> received a big pump by the investors and uh, it's amazing because uh, uh, in this way the the people uh, begin begin to understand uh, what is a metaverse uh, how cool is that so in the moment we were talking about that uh, three years ago, the people look at me to, in a very strange way, talking, <laughs> telling me, well, what the fuck are you, are you telling on this? No, uh, this is not the future of the social or the real world, uh, stuff like that. In this moment, uh, the metaverse uh, is something that, uh, of course, uh, the problem is that it will be a buzzword where everybody has the metaverse in their business. Uh, you build some pens, uh, you will add okay pens uh, in, the, in the in the in the metaverse. But uh, of course, uh, our project is centered uh, in the the same way in the same vision of uh, Facebook. Talking about the decentralization, of course, this is a big topic. I I saw a lot of comments under uh, the, the the videos of Meta that told, okay, but uh, nobody wants to give uh, his next life to to mark zuckerberg no this is a it, this is a problem for for them because they are of course uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, corporate in the world talking about the number of the users and the profits they generate so uh, we can discuss on the fact that ovr is cool facebook is not cool but facebook is really cool because actually has billions of users so, so it's still very very cool talking about the facebook try to do something different from facebook uh, this is a, a, a matter now because uh, you, you, you see, at, uh, I remember an exhibition uh, uh, three, two years ago, I, I think, uh, when there was the announcement of Libra. Now, everybody talk about Libra, like the new Graal no? for the blockchain, like the new uh, crypto money for all the world war, the stuff like that. At that time, I, I told that Libra had never been happened because uh, is uh, against uh, the philosophy, no, the centralization. Of course, they got also some problem because uh, trying to create uh, a stable coin uh, from the United States is not <laughs> so easy stuff. But uh, of course, Facebook is Facebook. No, if you're talking about the fact that you want to give all your next life to Facebook, I don't think it's really a cool thing. But they are very powerful. They have thousands and thousands. I, I read a, 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 I read the news that uh, well they declare they added uh, ten thousand engineers to work on that so it's something huge. I think that also that uh, in this kind of businesses, like it was happening in, in different uh, industries, the race will be well, win by an outsider, an open platform, something that probably will be acquired. I don't know, but uh, I think that the outsider that uh, is. Uh, quicker in the market, that is faster, that is also decentralized. We are not actually totally decentralized, but we want to be as much decentralized as we can. No. And this is not the vision of these corporates. So I think that the community prefer to own their data, own uh, their, uh, their asset, and decide to resell them when they want, as they want, in the markets they want. Consider it that an avatar, your avatar, Andrea, can exist in different metaverses. We are doing some collaboration of also with different companies that create, are centered, uh, and focus on the avatar uh, creation, skin creations, etc. We are an open world. So if your avatar uh, can coexist in our metaverse, it can coexist also in a gaming platform, for example. 
and also the track record of your avatar and the friends, for example, can be shared from one platform to one other platform. So it's amazing this kind of stuff. It's not so easy to create that, but uh, it's the, I think that uh, the people prefer to to be forced in this way and this way to manage the data. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, actually asking a friend about I want to buy a, a VR headset, and he said, "Oh, you can buy Oculus, but be be careful because um, it's, not, it's still um, it's owned by Facebook." So they are thinking about the, cop the coupling uh, this uh, Oculus VR from Facebook, but still, like Facebook is the is the creator of this uh, this uh, device, and then of course they have access to all the data and everything. So yeah, and for me as a as a uh, black blockchain ad ad adopter and um, I really <laughs> like block decentralization and not having control uh, not even uh, not only about my money but also the the data and, and stuff I think it's uh, important of course and that's why I think OVR has um, has a huge um, advantage in, when it comes to decentralization and uh, the possibilities right uh, cool and uh, maybe just move to the next question because it's something that people are actually asking a lot you know I see people asking a lot I wasn't even a group seeing that um, I see so many questions I even had a, this question myself because we t we we know that ethereum fees are super high you no know, crazy high and OVR is also tradable on binance smart chain but um, you cannot build stuff on binance smart chain of course um, what kind of things uh, moving to layer two um, will be possible to do? So can you share your vision and economy inside of VR or VR when you get rid of the gas fees? Uh, we'll be able to maybe mint and sell NFTs inside of VR experience and so on. What, what, what will be possible with the layer two? Yeah, it's, a, it's the main question actually you know, on, on the blockchain space. So uh, basically, we know the value of the NFT actually, the NFT is actually is an, on the Ethereum blockchain. And uh, we can discuss on that, uh, is the truth. So, okay, we can discuss about the gas fees, we can discuss about the scalability problems. But if you mm, had a look to the statistics, uh, the NFT value is inside Ethereum. So after this consideration, because we see uh, some projects that are going to different uh, chains to create uh, this uh, NFT markets and value, we think that Ethereum will still remain you know, the main uh, place where uh, store the value of the assets. After this consideration, uh, we can uh, have uh, two kinds of choice. One is to go to a side chain. No, there are so many. We can see Polygon, for example, is a really good side chain because, uh, technically speaking, has some interesting features. Uh, and Polygon is also well accepted by the Ethereum community. Uh, we are in contact with them, uh, and um, it could be interesting to talk about. There are some uh, thoughts about uh, the scalability because right now, of course, uh, the gas fees are very low on Polygon. They can uh, scale up a lot. Uh, but uh, people is asking, okay, what will happen? Whether there will be a mass adoption on Polygon or no, about the scalability? But it's only a, 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 a problem of some people that uh, can doubt on uh, this kind of approach. Then uh, there is some more centralized blockchains like Binance Chain, and we are uh, we have uh, uh, listed our token on PancakeSwap uh, to permit the people to to exchange our token with. Um, with a, a glow gas, uh, of course. Uh, and we are going to introduce in the next week also the fact you can also bid on our OVR land auctions uh, through the uh, BP20. So you can directly go from the Binance to do offers to buy a land. Uh, so we are we are integrating also these opportunities that is interesting. We also approach, technically approach uh, some uh, the ZK rollup, uh, and uh, there are some problems on that. There are some in very interesting companies we are talking, like uh, Immutable X, uh, for example, and uh, where uh, they solve the, the minting of the NFTs. Uh, no? uh, so probably we see the OBR. I, and now I can disclose what are the next steps, but uh, in, the, in the next month, uh, you will see uh, a big news about that, uh, about the fact that we are going to, to, to scale up uh, still maintaining the store of the value on ethereum blockchain okay interesting yeah cool so and um 
yeah, for me, like scalability is very important because you know people are like building stuff and they want to experience all that and buy lands, exchange, and, and yeah, fees are insane for Ethereum now. I hope you guys succeed with this. I think this will be a, a huge step for the project, you know, to be more scalable. And uh, something that um, I like to talk about today also is a question that from from uh, from people in the group. Um, actually, talk more about the tokenomics because. There was a huge change in the tokenomics, uh, not maybe not that huge, but uh, about the burning mechanism you guys yeah. implemented. And maybe you can talk about that and also the IBCO and um, the tokenomics in general. How do you see how you how does the project increase the token value over time? You know, well, how do you guys see uh, uh, all the tokenomic uh, to tokenomics in general? Yeah. So talking about the, the last thing, so the boring activity that is the big news in the VR community. So we introduced uh, uh, the deflating system where the 50% uh, of the sales we generate from the auction uh, will be born. In this way, we are going to raise the value of our token because we are going to remove liquidity from the market. This is one uh, big uh, news. So there will be less and less tokens on the market in the time. It is very, very interesting also talking about the value. Talking about the tokenomics at the beginning, uh, we create uh, something that is very different from the other projects. Uh, and uh, we were inspired by Avagochi. Uh, that is very interesting project by Ave, and uh, we create uh, an uh, IBC or an initial bonding core offer that is uh, a curve that is based on the Bancor formula. It's a smart contract that basically is an auto market making system that basically buy mint and burn tokens uh, uh, when you buy or sell uh, your tokens. So the price is automatically calculated. Uh, uh, through this uh, uh, curve that has a formula, and uh, it's very interesting to see that right now, as you can as you can see, there are uh, near uh, 13 million uh, die inside the curve. The curve die is a stable coin that is big, that is a uh, big by one dollar, and. Uh, uh, is not baked because it is an algorithm of stable coin, but basically the value of die is uh, <laughs> every time one dollar. Is uh, as you can see, as much people buy the OVR token, as much higher is the price. It's very interesting because you know, in uh, some project, uh, you can see the price pump, you can see uh, the raising of value, but the liquidity part is the uh, most important aspect. How much liquid is that market that permits me to exit also the market? So it's not important to see the token uh, do in one day 10x or uh, 100x uh, the price, but it's important to see how much liquidity has that market. No, so in this case, uh, the, this curve basically permit us uh, not doesn't permit us to grow very fast in the price because uh, you need a lot of uh, liquidity to push the price, but uh, of course it protects the price. But uh, of course, uh, as you can see, the, the last night was sold near uh, half a million dollars and the price move uh, for a very small part. So uh, we think that uh, for a project like OVR is not uh, uh, a question of volatility. It's not interesting for us to create a, a huge speculation on the token. The most important part is to create uh, something that uh, has value, something that uh, is baked by a, a huge amount of liquidity, because uh, the user must the users must trust uh, on the project. It's not a question of speculation on a white paper or something that uh, is not execution, but it's a question to, to say, look, you have uh, you are exchanged on GetIO, on Bitmart, MXC, on Pumpcake, on uh, Uniswap. We have uh, a good volume, and we have also this bonding curve that protect the price because there's a lot of liquidity inside. The community, of course, is asking us to change the shape of the curve, and we are uh, thinking about that uh, to permit the token uh, to grow up quickly because uh, there are some parameters uh, the community can vote because we are a DAO that, uh, and the DAO manage the, the curve. We are not the owner of that liquidity. <laughs> so the DAO has to vote to change uh, the fact that uh, uh, the, the, the cure can have a behavior on another behavior. We are going to introduce a vote for that. But uh, basically, uh, because the community, you know, want to see the, the price pump uh, every time, no, X times. But uh, as you can see, our trend is a very interesting trend because after the March, we reached the $3 value. The value goes down, but was stable in the time. 
And after uh, the, 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 last, uh, the, the last month announcement of Meta, of course, and the market activities we are doing, we are uh, pumping again and we are still maintaining a value near the $2, stuff like that. Probably thanks to the burning, uh, the burning activity, the, the price in the time will go up. But for OVR, it's not a problem. For the community, it's good. I, I, I love it. For the OVR, uh, is not a question of price. It's a question of execution of what is uh, the metaverse. No? And uh, of course, the investments are the very important aspects of VR because thanks to the investors, uh, we are realizing what we are realizing. So uh, we can say that uh, if this project uh, is, uh, was not in the blockchain, uh, probably we didn't raise so much capital to execute, to hire, hire people, to invest in marketing. So we are happy on this because uh, thanks to the blockchain space, we introduced the ownership layer, this utility token, and we, we generate a huge income that permits to scale up to try to compete with uh, uh, elephants like uh, Facebook mm. or stuff like that. We are uh, excited about that. Talking about the price, we prefer to, okay, to grow up, the burning, uh, Will uh, we we'll remove liquidity for the market, and naturally the the price will goes up without rush, uh, without uh, speculation, uh, uh, like uh, we see in other projects. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, cool. And talking about the exchange listings, uh, any update coming soon to the community? Yeah, or? I can disclose that, uh, but uh, you will see, and we are working hard uh, for the, of course, the. the two tier one exchanges. Right now, the most important exchange we have uh, talking about the capitalization is Gate.io. On CoinGecko, Gate.io is the, in the eighth place, uh, I think. And uh, we are working uh, on the tier one. Uh, we are near, thanks also to Zuckerberg, uh, to, thanks to Meta. Finally, some uh, big uh, exchange uh, decided to, uh, to, to list to us, uh, to, to give us some attention because as you can see, there is a big exchange that posted on Twitter, uh, they're going to invest in the metaverse. Uh, and so thanks to this big news, uh, probably we'll finally reach uh, the result to be on the tier one. Tier one for us uh, represent uh, an opportunity of visibility. Mm -hmm. So for us uh, is uh, basically marketing the community, of course, because the price, etc. tell, okay, you have to go to tier one and now every day they write, no, you have to go to tier one, tier one, okay. We are doing that. It's not a question to raise capital because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are already well funded. And uh, talking about the visibility that can have uh, is a huge opportunity, of course, because uh, the Taiwan exchange, uh, so I don't know, Binance or uh, Wobby, are uh, two huge exchanges. They have a huge community compared to the other ones, uh, and uh, it would be something amazing to be to to be there. And we hope so. But it's not dependent by us, no. If I can pay for that, only to pay for that, probably we already do that. But uh, mm -hmm. is, the, is it independent by us? But we are working hard. And thanks to this news of the, on the metaverse, probably we will see some uh, amazing results on this direction. Mm -hmm. So, so far we have nothing confirmed about the exchange list. Is we still, you're still no. talking to them. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so another thing is like partnerships. You guys are planning to do some partnerships with other projects or other things coming, like uh, something you guys are working yeah. on now? We, we received the, the request from a lot of NFT projects. You can see in our own page, uh, we updated yesterday and uh, the partnerships. Uh, and there are a lot of NFTs, uh, like uh, for example, one was Dodge Pound, that is an NFT uh, project, very interesting. And we collaborated in this way. We created a specific treasure hunting activity, like we did for our, our token, no? to, to collect some, uh, some assets. Uh, to claim, uh, for, for the winner, to claim an NFT that has a big value. So the treasure hunt uh, is a use case uh, on our platform that permits, uh, first of all, to understand the technology. Secondly, to play something that uh, is look like a Pokemon Go style. In our case, the treasure hunt for VR uh, you know, the, uh, represent for us a lot of, uh, represented for us a lot of new users. We sent people in 1 million different locations all around the world to collect our tokens. We demonstrated what, that when you put value on specific place, the people is disposed to move and to do games to collect value. So talking about the NFT collaboration, very interesting. They are going to distribute or in specific place. For example, we, we were to the Ethereum weekend in Lisbon no, a few weeks ago. 
and uh, we distribute uh, uh, with uh, the Blackpool guys. Uh, there is an mm -hmm. amazing DAO, no? they, they invest in NFTs and different projects. Uh, and uh, we met them. It was a really, really interesting uh, uh, days. was the really interesting days. We distribute some uh, NFTs uh, in, in, in the space. And uh, the winner of this uh, treasure hunt uh, uh, claimed uh, uh, an NFT of a value of thousand of dollars. So uh, it's interesting the way of the gam we gamify gamify the fact that you can uh, uh, earn uh, tokens, NFTs, and uh, stuff like that. So partnership on NFT as that. Then we have a, a very interesting partnership you can uh, see in our app with art artists, NFT artists uh, like. Uh, Giovanni Motta, for example, and uh, other one, we have about eight or 10 galleries inside our platform. When you can go inside the gallery, sometimes you can meet also the artist in person through the avatar, and you can uh, buy the NFT, and you can have a 3D representation of the gallery, in this case, in virtual reality. So the gallery is totally reconstructed, uh, the, the pictures are exposed, the NFT are exposed, and they are, are linked to the OpenSea, or uh, super rare or uh, the platform where uh, they are selling that we are going to introduce in the next future also this uh, huge news the fact that uh, we uh, put a, a marketplace to sell the nfts directly inside the ovr platform so without push the user to go out to, to uh, OpenSea, for example is will be very interesting we already tested battle tested the, the, this in the secondary marketplace for the lens so we are ready to introduce that also to sell other kind of stuff. For example, the skin of your avatar, you know, your new Gucci shoes, your, uh, I don't know, the, an NFT you built, you mint uh, on the Ethereum blockchain, you want to sell inside our marketplace, uh, in, in our metaverse. Uh, and so it would be amazing to integrate uh, more and more you know, things inside the metaverse so you can stay there and do all the stuff you have to do without go outside. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm super excited. Uh, cannot wait for the for the next steps. Actually, this is a question I have here also for also from the community, but it's a question I also have. So Jimmy from Denmark asked here, could you guys uh, give a broad insight of the roadmap with a rough timeline? What of has now um, uh, has now and what expect in the near distant future in terms of thought, yeah. Uh, roadmap? Yeah. Try to simplify what we are doing because we are doing a lot of stuff. But uh, talking about the core. OVR. As I mentioned, we created the ownership layer is running very well. So the auction on the land and the secondary market for the land. Then we built and we continue to build the, the SDK that permits to the user to through the Unity 3D to create experiences. We have also the, the, the web builder for the no-coders. The third layer is the mapping layer. So basically, we are going to introduce an absolutely new way to earn uh, value on our tokens uh, going around the world mapping the lands why we are asking the, the user to map the lands and uh, the user will be paid to do that uh, because uh, you know to create an augmented reality uh, metaverse you have to solve a big problem the big problem is the geolocalization you know actually through the gps you have no accuracy no outside because you can have a uh, four, six, 10 meters of accuracy. It depends on, on uh, where you are in the world. Uh, talking about the indoor activities, you are, see if you're inside the building, uh, the GPS doesn't work because the GPS try to tell to you, okay, you are near there uh, and uh, 20, or 20 or 30 meters of accuracy. But uh, this is a huge problem because if you decide to put the avatar on dry in a specific place inside the Walmart, for example, if you decide to put uh, a content in the Colosseum, uh, or, I don't know, you want to reproduce, to reconstruct, for example, a, an, an environment uh, in the real world, you have to be a, a very accurate uh, in, the, in the tracking system. So we create, a, we build a technology that is based on photogrammetry and artificial intelligence, where through the pictures, so it's not needed to have uh, specific hardware like the iPhone LiDAR or stuff like that. Everybody, to, thanks to the camera of their phone, can take pictures uh, on a specific land. Thanks to the, the, these pictures, uh, we can recreate the point cloud so that 3D representation of their environment. And through the AI, we can help the other user to understand in very accurate way where they are in the place, in the world. 
So uh, is there something like uh, uh, the, the human and the human brain happens now? If you are in your room, actually, you take some uh, point, uh, some key points inside the room. Uh, if uh, uh, you, 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 you rotate, uh, you go around your room, you can understand where you are because uh, you are taking some key points uh, uh, you are understanding, okay, I'm uh, uh, near the dinner room, I'm near the bedroom. Uh, uh, you can uh, take some point of reference. No? In the same way that the artificial intelligence we use, uh, thanks to the picture and uh, thanks to the fact that uh, this uh, neural network is trained by the pictures, when this neural network see a new picture inside the, the environment, uh, estimate the, the, the position in the space. So it's very, very important because in this, in this way, we solve also a huge problem talking about the indoor tracking. If you want to have a personal assistant, an avatar inside a, a Walmart, for example, this Walmart, this avatar, uh, you have to understand where it is in the space. Can, can't walk uh, uh, through the walls can we we'll go in the right uh, in the wrong direction if you have to buy a specific uh, uh, product inside the, inside the Walmart? So in our case, through the picture, the, the our app can understand exactly where it is. Okay, this this activity that we call Met to Earn will be amazing because a lot of people, also considering the social inclusion in that, a lot of people can begin to earn of your tokens only using his phone. Everybody has a phone, no? Everybody can use their camera. And so you have, uh, of course, there is a, a guided uh, activity you have to follow. It takes about 20 minutes for land, but you are paid for that. Because if I am the landowner of the Torre Eiffel, we sold the Torre Eiffel with a big auction, and we closed that with uh, $100,000. No, it was, it was amazing. And uh, if you are the owner of the Torre Eiffel, of the Torre Eiffel of your lands, uh, and you want to put uh, a content uh, that uh, is exactly in that position and correlated to the Torre Eiffel, you have to understand the environment. To understand the environment, someone has to go there, has to take picture, has to send uh, to the OVR infrastructure the picture. And this neural network is trained to understand uh, in the next time uh, where the user is. So it, it's amazing on the fact that uh, the big corporates can't do that because we have the uh, economical incentivization to do that. If you consider Google Street View, for example, Google Street View, you have the cars of the employees of Google. You have the people with the bag and the camera on top of the end and try to go around to, to scan the world. But uh, they can't reach uh, a so granularity we can reach. So we can uh, send, uh, I don't know, uh, millions of people around the world to create the biggest uh, 3D map of the world. Also talking about the inside of the buildings. So not only the outside one, someone can say, okay, there is Google Earth, Google Street View, okay. It's, it's not like that because uh, with our technology, we ask the user to go in a specific land and to take a lot of picture to create the 3D representation of that. So it will be amazing to see that the community can we learn money, not only to do a treasure run, not only like Axie Infinity do to play games, because of course you are generating value, but you are playing a game. No, in our case, you are doing something really useful because creating a map uh, that is a representation of the real world, you are helping, helping to grow with this augmented reality metaverse. And this will be a huge aspect because uh, you can say, Andre, okay, but we are doing a technical thing that everybody can do. No, can create another company can create a platform. Without an, a, a mapping of the world, you can't do that. So we imagine that the VR we very, very, very competitive in the market for for the, this quest. With the, the, this quest, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, this is a, it's a very interesting topic as well. Like for me, that mapping the the, the real world, you know, bring it to the metaverse. I think is uh, something that uh, it's very necessary if people want to actually interact with the, the the metaverse and and have some some like a more fulfilling experience. You know, having a, a real experience in the metaverse. Yeah, so it's a uh, I really like this map to earn uh, feature. Uh, it's it's quite nice to be honest. And uh, yeah, so talking about the next steps, uh, David, uh, you, you you mentioned you're going to uh, Miami very soon. Maybe you'd like to yeah. share something with us, like what uh, you you're gonna do there. Um, is something related to investors or marketing? Maybe yeah, just tell us yeah. what's, uh, what are the next steps. <laughs> At the end of this month, we are going to Miami for the Art Basel uh, week. 
uh, it's been very interesting because right now Miami is considered the Crypto Valley, no? So we went to San Francisco uh, a few times to meet some of our uh, advisor and we met a lot of interesting people. But we think that right, right now it would be very cool to be in Miami that week. Uh, we are ready some, uh, some investors, uh, some funds that uh, are interested to talk with us. Because right now with this map to earn uh, um, feature, we are raising the interest also for the data companies because you can imagine uh, how much data we collect in the, this way. So it's very interesting uh, uh, to, to be in the United States. Uh, probably we are going to collaborate also with uh, some companies there. And uh, this is part of our Russia, you know, at the beginning, we went for um, for more than one month in China, in South Korea, and we attended all the main uh, events in the blockchain space from uh, Russia, from Malta. Uh, we went in, in in Israel, so we know that the the, the the blockchain space thanks also to our roadshows. No, at the beginning, nobody uh, trusts about the metaverse and the stuff we, we, we did. Uh, right now, we see that a lot of investors want to go. Going. It's, it's a very exciting moment for uh, for OVR. It's very uh, very excited because we have also the power, the economical power, to push OVR uh, uh, in uh, to the moon. As uh, uh, not not only talking about the, the, the token value that is of course a metric for us, uh, but talking about the fact we can compete also with big corporates because uh, we are a crowdsourced. So the community put the value. The community owns the data, and the community can push. Uh, this is a huge opportunity. They are metaverse uh, in the market. No, it, 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 this is the main difference between us and the centralized uh, initiative. Yeah, very cool. No, sounds uh, sounds very amazing. I'm really excited about uh, the project. I cannot wait for you know having all this see this all these uh, implementations and new features. Is there anything else you'd like to to share with us before we wrap up the episode today? No, basically, uh, you know, we are a, a, a small company, even if we have uh, right now 1,000, 1,000 users, we are growing very fast. Probably uh, uh, one thing we can do better, no? talking about the fact that we are okay, we are really cool talking about the execution, we think so. Uh, talking about the marketing activity, we are trying to push and push more our brand around the world. And thanks also to guys like you, Andre. The idea is try to reach more opportunities, no, to, to spread the OVR brand or the other one. Because uh, right now we know we met a lot of uh, OVR Marines, we call them, no, also in Lisbon, no, in the last uh, the last event that uh, met us uh, in in that occasion is amazing because uh, we have a lot of fans of VR, no, and uh, I'm very excited because uh, I, when I'm in, in, in my office, I I can understand, I can see. How much you now popular is uh, OVR in the world? Mar running around the world, I see that. But probably we have too small right now because uh, we have to increase our marketing activity. You know, it's not so easy you now to do that in the blockchain space. You know? So we are investing a lot of money in this. Uh, but I think that together with people also like you, with the important influencer, uh, stuff like that, we can uh, spread this uh, vision. I think that uh, really will be the next way we live our life in, in, in the world. Probably OVR will be the, the main uh, the main player. I don't know. We hope so. But probably if we not OVR, uh, someone else will be. So our vision is clear. Someone has to be the main actor in this AR metaverse world. And we are running for that. Super exciting. Okay, David, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview today. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was really, really, really fun. And I'm super excited to, to, for the project. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Join the OVR uh, Telegram group. I'm going to leave all the links down below here, guys, for the website and everything else. Uh, I also leave a like and a comment down below. I'll be very excited to read all the, the comments and answer the questions as well. So, David, thank you so much for, for your time today. And uh, I hope to see you then, everybody, uh, next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, André. Bye. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Eu espero que você tenha gostado da entrevista, assim como eu. Se você não assistiu o vídeo review que eu fiz do projeto OVR há muitos meses atrás, eu vou deixar aqui no lado direito do vídeo. E vejo vocês todos da próxima vez. Um abraço!